celebrate the Lord, celebrate the Lord, celebrate the Lord. Thank you, our great praise and worship. God bless you for the wonderful ministration. What a wonderful thing to be in the presence of God. Tell your neighbor, every curse that is speaking over your head must be exposed and delivered in Jesus' name. Look for another friendly neighbor and tell them, I invoke the power of a blessing upon your life in the name of Jesus. Look for another one and tell them, you are blessed when you come in. You are blessed when you walk out of this place. Amen. Take your seat because you are already blessed. Amen. So my topic right now is exposing and deliverance from curses. Exposing and deliverance from curses. What is a curse? A curse is the opposite of a blessing. It's the opposite of a blessing. When you, we say you are living under a curse, it is absence of divine goodwill. It is absence of divine goodwill. We say a man is living under a curse when you're lacking divine goodwill. We also say that a man is working under a curse when the heavens are closed. When heavens are closed. When we say heavens are closed, we mean that your prayers are not getting answered. And also there is nothing good that is coming in in your life. What is done in heaven is not happening in your life. We also can call and, and define a curse as an unusual termination of blessings. An unusual termination of blessings. It is when blessings come in your life and they go out quickly. We can be saying that that could be a curse that is working in your life. A curse is also when you experience defeat from enemies, continual defeat by enemies could be a sign that there is a curse in your life. I want you to know that curses can affect a generation. That is why we talk about generational curses. I'm talking about types of curses. There are generational curses that are, turned, that are uh, communicated or transferred from one generation to another, from one people to another. Most of those are caused by iniquity of fathers. It is where there are unrepented sins in a generation and nobody has ever rose up in that generation to repent and, and, and seek for the mercy of God for the curses to be broken. There are also curses on places. On places. There are places that are cursed. We are going to talk about sources of curses but we can talk about places that are cursed. For instance, uh, one time David cursed Mount Gilboa because that is where King Saul was slain. And he said, Woe unto you, Mount Gilboa. Let there be no dew on you. Because there, the blood of the anointed was shed. And he was slain like he was not anointed by God. And David cursed the mountain. Cities, you remember the land of Jericho. If you read the story, the Bible says that Joshua and the army, they, they praised God and the wall of Jericho came down. He pronounced a curse on anybody who will try to rebuild Jericho. And he said, the minute they lay the foundation, the firstborn shall die. And by the time they finish building the gate, the, the lastborn shall die. And a man called Hiel of Bethel, who was ignorant of the curse that was there, came and started rebuilding Jericho. And the curse pursued them. You are ignorant all our ignorance is what makes us vulnerable to curses. That is why we are exposing them. Because once you identify a curse, you know how to deal with it. Let's open the Bible in the book of Proverbs chapter 26. Proverbs chapter 26. And we read from verse 1 to verse 3. Verse 2. It says, As snow in summer and as rain in harvest, so honor is not seemingly for a fool. Verse 2. As the bird by watering, as the bird by wandering, as the swallow by flying, so the curse costless shall not come. It means that every curse that is already in effect in your life has a cause. Somebody say, every curse has a cause. I can't hear you. So when you identify the cause of a curse, 
you are safer. That is why we are exposing. Not every curse manifests itself differently. What is deliverance? Deliverance is to snatch away from. Deliverance is to rescue. Deliverance is to bring to birth. It means that when we expose the curse, we will not leave you at the level of exposure. We must do with the next thing, which is to deliver you. And Galatians 3.13 talks about Jesus himself. That when he died on the cross, he redeemed us from the curse of the law. Because every curse comes as a result of a law that is broken. There can be no curses if there are no laws. Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law by, the, by becoming a curse for us. For it is written, curse is everyone who is hung on a tree. So the good news is, deliverance is your kingdom legal right. You can be delivered from every curse. Why? Because Christ has redeemed us. To redeem is to buy us back. To redeem is to take our guilt away. It means that the minute you get born again, you have a legal right to claim for a blessing. That is what I want to pronounce over your life. Let there be a blessing from today henceforth. Look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, curse has redeemed, Christ has redeemed us from every curse. One of the major causes of a curse is sin. Is sin. There is no curse without sin. Once sin is involved in the life of a man, if you remember our first parents, Adam and Eve, when they committed sin, they were kept out of the presence of God. And from that time, people that were supposed to eat from the fruit of the garden without laboring, they were just supposed to be beneficiary to replenish and take care of it. Adam was cast and was told that you will have to sweat to eat. And the woman was told that you are going to have labor and it's going to be so painful for you to reproduce. No wonder it's not easy to be a man. No wonder it's not easy to be a man. But remember the word of God is saying that a curse without a cause cannot rest on the, on the head of a man. That there are signs and symptoms of a curse in your life. It is time we identify the cause. And we are not going to stop there. We are going to look at the redemption package that Jesus Christ gave us and we are going to declare Satan you are here illegally I've already been redeemed from sickness I've already been redeemed from poverty I've already been redeemed from rejection I've already been redeemed from death and I can guarantee you the weapons of our warfare they never fail if you use them on curses they work the blood of Jesus Christ has never failed it is still redeeming men from the curse of sin somebody say I'm redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ in case you are not born again the blood of Jesus is given free for you. You can be redeemed from the curse of sin by accepting Jesus to become uh, your Lord and your Savior. Curses are men. Why they come? They are supposed to bring remorse, which is rep repentance, and also bring shame. There are people who will not be corrected by word of mouth. So sometimes God will allow curses to come and bring shame and create remorse. That is why he told the children of Israel that anytime you turn away from me, I will let an enemy come and punish you that your heart may come back to me. Tell your neighbor for me, if, 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 if there is any shame in your life, investigate your life. It is not every place that is called by the name of the Lord is a church. There are some places that people will guide you and entice you to go to, to be prayed for. And Kumbe, they are not altars of God. That is why the first commandment that was given, thou shalt love the Lord of God you are with you all your heart. And you will worship no other God but me. It is very critical that where you are worshipping and where you go, you understand whether it is God, the God we are talking about who is there, or another strange God. Anytime the children of Israel consulted another strange God, there were repercussions. It is still the same even today. You can never step into an altar and remain the same. Tell your neighbor, anytime you step into an altar, whether good or bad, something enters you and something leaves your life. That is why when you come to church, you leave your burdens here and you carry your rest. When you enter to a witchcraft altar, you, you carry heaviness and curses and above all, God disappears from your life. I pray that in the name of Jesus Christ, any effect of an evil altar in your life, let it be revealed in the name of Jesus. Can I get an amen? amen? That is why people who don't believe in the God we believe in, you cannot have money without power. Tell anybody, if you want money, you must get spiritual power. So you either get it by prayer and by the word of God, or you either get it by and that is why shrewd businessmen that know how to get businesses, they will have a witch doctor somewhere and some of them don't even have one. They will have five. 
and they consult them and they give them cows they give them goats they give them sacrifices some of them even giving human blood and why do they give it because it in deuteronomy 8 18 i am the lord god that give the power to make wealth i came to declare to you you can be right rich in a righteous way you can have money without evil consultation i came to declare in the name of jesus every evil altar that has been managing your finances let that altar catch fire let that altar catch holy ghost fire can you raise up your hand and say 